Bagamoyo, we're gonna go to the farm. You know, you're gonna see lots of fruits and vegetables. What is up, Ken folk? Peace and light. It's traveling sister. If this is your first time joining the channel, then welcome. If not, I almost tripped. <laughs> ah, welcome back, family. We are on Big's farm, okay? I'm so excited about this because, as you guys know, I'm a nature person. I love the fresh air, I love the nature, I love just being out here is beautiful it's a little overcast but that's okay because we're gonna get trekking you guys i'm just really excited there's rice in the middle here look you see you dry the thing and then this is a rice grain hmm. oh yeah you take off the thing oh wow this is really rice i didn't understand how they got so much <laughs> oh. Oh. Be careful again, right here. There's another one. There's another line of hands. Come. They're real thick right here. Yeah. Two trails. Oh, that's serious. Right? You eat the roots, right? Yeah. That's the part you, you eat. You hit the roots, it's <laughs> underneath here. It's cassava, but hey, these are still early. Come here. Look, a dragon did that. <laughs> Look, you hear how quiet they were? They were processing. Like, hold on, wait. There is no dragon. Are you sure? Yeah. Quilly, you're really sure? I look and see, like, what a minute. So this is your farm? Yeah, once you cross, now you're on my land. All Everything you can see here is my land. Yeah, right here. That's a post. The post, the divided post. Okay, and this little tree straight across. What's the size of it? Eight acres, okay. The baby starts growing automatically beside it. Oh, Once you cut yeah. this one bunch of bananas off, this tree's no good anymore. You oh, cut the tree off oh, in wow. half, and then you allow that baby one to grow. And then you get, it just keeps going on like that, and like that, and like that. How about it? This is my farmer. Okay, sour. They get a lot bigger than this if you allow them to grow. Sometimes they reap them smaller, sometimes they get, uh, they can go up to like three times this size. Call it miogo. We call it cassava. Or oh, what they call it again? Yuka. You guys call it, or oh, tapioca. Yuka. Oh, yuka. Is this not tapioca though? That's what I heard. I but I'm like, I can't, I don't in America. I can't I confirm that. Okay. I've heard tapioca though. Tapioca. 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 Tapio
Mm-hmm. It's cassava? Mm-hmm. It's good when you just you skin it and you fry it. You know what? I just eat it raw. Yeah, a lot of people eat it raw, too. Yeah. I just eat this just raw. Yeah. Yeah. Boil, yeah. Wow. I peel it, huh. soak it in cold water, put salt and pepper on it, like like dried salt and pepper, and I eat it while I watch the movies. That sounds <laughs> so, good. so good. I'm actually going to try that. <laughs> Life of luxury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is water supply. Water comes from the earth. It's still not very um, sustainable though. I need a more sustainable water supply. It kind of catches the rainwater. The rainwater stays in the earth and when you dig it comes up and we pump it out. Very rudimentary system. They also catch the rainwater. You see the rain from the roof there? Yeah. Drop down in the sink, comes oh, all the way down okay. here. So this is just a storage thing of water. But if I had the well here, the farm would be doing a lot better than it is actually. I'm so happy. This is a passion fruit. Passion fruit grows around the tree. Passion fruit is a vine. So you have to put the stick up here and the passion fruit wraps around the tree and then bears fruit. But look, there's a, he's taking down a baby bird to show you all. Oh, oh don't disturb it. Look, it's a baby bird in the tree. Be careful. He like, man, who are these people? When, so, guys, when I bought this farm, it looked like what you see behind me. The whole place looked like this. A lot of uh, elbow grease went down. A lot of elbow grease. So, can you tell people why you burn or why they burn? Why they the burn? Because whenever it rains, it comes up like crazy. If you see that land there, how it is, and it makes it- It's full bush. Unfarmable. So what they burn is two reasons, to fertilize the soil and to have the soil ready for a new crop. I don't necessarily agree with the burning. I, I try and encourage them not to burn, but as I said, I'm not here too often. And if they didn't burn, it'd just be a wild jungle. So they have to also burn to separate the land. Mm -hmm. So you see inside my land, I tell them, don't burn my shit. So all my shit's there, but this is like a gap. Mm -hmm. So the line with the, the farm is not really like, there's still supposed to be like two meters on either side that kind of belongs to nobody. So walkway, because how we do farming here also, just like we walk through other people's farm to get here, mm -hmm. other people walk through my farm. To get there. Yeah, so yeah. when uh, there was actually a roadway running through my farm that I re-diverted and the village was quite upset with me, but I had to explain to them, listen, I'm doing this just like you guys, so you can't be riding your bike through my crops. But the kind of land thing here, uh, there's a misconception they say foreigners can't own land in Tanzania. Nobody owns land in Tanzania. This is a republic. The government owns all land in Tanzania. So the idea of land ownership is different to how we have it. What you own is what's on your land. So some days I'll come here before, I, I'm real cool with this village. Like this village know me. I've been here like 10, 12 years. Everybody know me around here. And the crazy Rasta guy from Jamaica, he'll disappear for six months, he'll come back. But land ownership here is not like how it is to us. Sometimes you come here and see like 20 people just chilling on your land. When I first came, I was like, who the hell are these people? Like, what are they? And people are like, oh, they're just from the village. Like, it's the same here. We could go chill over there. It's no biggie. True. So what you have on the land is what's yours. But the land is a land. Like, no one really owns any land here. And I like that. A lot of opportunities to do stuff in here. As I said, it's just, I had a choice that I had to make. Focus in the city or focus on the farm. And my kids live in the city. They go to school, everything. So Right, let me focus on making money in the city, but farm is great money. I'll, I'm going to show you some of my neighbor's farms after, and I pretty much have an idea of what an acre of this makes. What an acre of, like for example, they say a mango tree makes you $300 a year. Because there's two seasons in a year for a mango tree. So if you've got 100 mango trees, that's $30,000 a year you're making. An acre of pineapple is about $700 dollars per year so you got 10 acres you understand so avocados is the worst avocado they're calling that green gold mm -hmm. an acre of avocados is about two thousand six hundred dollars mm -hmm. so you got 10 acres that's that's and you, you could get a season every year 
You know, so you got 10 acres of avocado, that's $26,000 a year. Just some avocado. Mm. And that never stops. That's like the gift that keeps giving. Yeah. Right? It just keeps producing and producing and producing. And the initial investment's an investment. And then after it just keeps sprouting. It's great money in food because it's just seed and rainwater. Then you have to pay a farmer. They don't get paid much, of course. But you see what I do, like, I pay him pretty much what the other farmers get paid. But the benefit he's got over the other farms around is he just uses the land as he pleases. Right. So you see his house, like he got the biggest crib in the neighborhood. You know what I mean? Like he's doing good. He knows my tour so well. He's saying, what about the aloe vera? <laughs> I said, no, it's too much. He said, you're gonna cut a pass. So y'all, we are trekking through the bush right now, okay? We got the good brother cutting us a path with the machete. All is well. I clearly did not wear the right shoes for this. <laughs> you stay, you stay over there. But these have been burnt. Oh, I he see. was saying the fire, he didn't set this fire. They set the fire next door and it spread onto this farm. Uh -huh. oh. Exactly. Me and them always used to fight about that fire thing. But without that fire, this thing was all like high tall grass. <laughs> but what happens now is the land's ready again. Yeah. You know, just need one good rain, then all the ashes and stuff turns into fertilizer. Yeah. It's easier yeah. than it down. And these are some of the best aloe on earth. This is Nigerian aloe vera. I brought these here like 10 years ago. This is the first thing I planted here. Yeah, if, you, if you got a bag, you can say, and that's good for your hair, everything. Your skin, yeah. cuts. burns, cuts. Who wants one? Yeah. Yeah. I don't need a whole one. I don't need it. Yeah. 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 But the sun is going to be leaking. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, give me so, what we do, we take this whole one, and before you come out the bus, we chop. Makes sense. Number more, Johnny Gill. So, you guys, we are leaving the farm, and I believe we are going on a tour of the slave market, I think. Um, but, yeah, this was, man. I feel like I really feel like it's it's doable. You know what I'm saying? This this trip made me really feel like farming is doable. And you don't have to have some fancy farm. You don't have to have a bunch of fancy farming equipment. As y'all saw, he has like a rainwater collection system that he uses to water his crops with. Like, you know, and that's what I want people to understand that when you come out here, you can really do things on a, you know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't have to be a grand scale. It doesn't have to be something elaborate, something fancy and complicated, literally like, you know, and, and just working with the people, as the brother said, like, it's very important that you just play nice with the other kids. You feel me? You got to play nice with the other kids and you really have to, <laughs> right? Like, for real, you feel me though? You got to, you know, because this is a community. You got to think this land, before you came and occupied the land, the land was, you know what I'm saying? It, it belonged to other people as well. So, yeah. Well, that's a nice big one. And so they grow from this little thing, right? In the middle, right? They grow from the thing in the middle. They still need about four days at home before they turn yellow. Oh, yeah, I see. You see? Yeah.
railroad runs right through Central and Eastern Africa. They used to march slaves all the way from Kenya, Congo, Rwanda, Burundi. And this was the point where they'd send them off. Just like Elmina in, uh, in Ghana, this was the Elmina of East Africa. So this was a center of the East African slave trade. This was a sorting center right here to the right. They used to, the slaves used to be sorted right here, washed, things like that. And this building right here and we're gonna go to where they were auctioned after so this building is five six hundred years old this is the arab building as you can see so was it for the arab slave trade or for the african slave trade? arab slave trade. Of course, no, no. royalty lived between Zanzibar and Pemba and Bagamora and that's why you got all these mixed Arabs in Zanzibar and Pemba to this day. Mm. This is an old German colonial building, they call it the German bomber. So this is where the Germans ran East Africa from. This is a capital of German Africa and this was an administration building right here. Mm. This building itself is about 650 years old, but the Germans took it over 200 years ago, 250 years ago. Does anyone use it? No. Come from Saudi Arabia and the UAE to take goat and, and beef to be slaughtered for Eid. And they take wood all the way to the Camaros, to India, to Pakistan, all these kind of places. This is also an artist town. So a lot of young artists live in Bagamoya and are from Bagamoya because that National Arts College is here. So you see there's lots of these little shacks where people selling stuff. But all these buildings here, they're owned by particular families. So they've been passed down 10, 12, 15, 20 generations. They're mixed, they're mixed Arab and African. It reminds me of Zanzibar, Stone Town. See, I haven't been there yet. These buildings are 400 years older than America. So these buildings are like 100, 200 years old in the United States of America. East Africa's version of Elmina Castle. They also have a door and no return just like Elmina Castle. So this is where the slaves got auctioned off and this is where they were sold. And uh, they're never to be seen again. Now, there's a misconception with slavery that all slaves were taken from West Africa. That's a white man's colonial history. Slaves were taken from all over Africa. East African slaves ended up in the States, ended up also in Pakistan, in Yemen, in Saudi Arabia. There's a population of a million black people in Pakistan. The three million black people who live in India, they all came from here. You know, so there was, they say there was a hundred million black people taken through the transatlantic slave trade, there's another hundred million black people taken from the Indian Ocean slave trade. And this is the center of that trade right here. Okay, Bagamoyo means where I lay my heart. Moyo is heart. The reason the town is called Bagamoyo because enslaved African people from all over Africa were taken and sold here to the Arab slave trade and even to the white slave trade. Many of them had never seen the ocean before. Some of them had walked 2,000 miles from the Congo. When they arrived and saw the ocean, they had a heart attack. So the place, so many people died right here of a heart attack and so scared of what awaited them. They call it where I lay my heart to rest, Bagamoyo. So this is uh, East Africa's version of the door of no return. Once you came through this door, you never saw Africa again. Until 500 years later, we all came back. Do you know the name? 
Do you know the name of this place right here? This yeah, we're gonna show, well, they call this a slave fort, but right now it's a government facility, mm -hmm. which they still use it for trading. This has been a trading fort for 900 years. Wow. They still trade from here. That's why they don't really like people to film. But there's ways we film. We film at angles. If, we, if they come, I say, no, you're filming me. Right. You know, so that's what I say. We'll film when it's the time to film. Otherwise, they just say something, try and get a little something off you, but we don't need that hassle, right? right. You see all of these poles right here, right? Yeah. So what would happen with these poles is these poles were rented by the buyers of the slaves. And there was a big pole up here with chains attached to it. And once you were bought and sorted here, this would know this went to India, that's going to Pakistan, that's going to Oman. And you'd be trained for three days, six days, eight days, sometimes you die here. So your ship came to pick you up. So this was the last place where they all were, right on these things. And you can even see some scratchings and stuff on some of them. You know, so this is where people were trained to once they were bought. So this would be owned or rented by one person. So if he bought 100 slaves, 150, 200, everyone was trained up here. Another 100 trained up there, another 200 trained up there. And then you'd await here until the boat came. Then they'd march you down onto your boat. Never to be seen again. There's a lighthouse. Right, so this would send the ships in. Then you'd know exactly where to come and go. So this was a point of no return for many people. really amazing I learned a lot on the farm learned a lot walking through these you know these ruins and stuff like that let me see if I feel like y'all can't hear me but yeah just unwinding with the beer here on this beautiful beach here in Bagamoyo it's beautiful today was really beautiful day I had a lot of fun the diaspora, I just love, for real, you know, even though I know I need to do a better job at linking up with my with my skin folk out here, um, you know, I, I every time I do, I have such a good time linking up with the diaspora, for real, such a good group, all love, you know what I'm saying, so, yeah, I'm just gonna enjoy this beach, enjoy the views, enjoy this breeze. And I will see y'all later. Y'all know what it is.